Dan Carlin. It's hardcore history. Now, what's ironic, though, about this way of thinking is that it's very possible that slavery actually retarded technological innovation. Historians have been wondering forever why the Roman Empire, for example, seemed to be stalled in terms of technological development. Why weren't the Romans the ones who went to the moon or something like that? Well, in a funny way, slavery provides answers to problems that when you don't have slaves, you have to figure out technological ways around. In other words, you don't need labor-saving devices like the kind we invent today all the time if you have slaves to do it for you, do you? In South America, where um, slavery lasted longer than it did in North America, there were actually places outside of the major cities where they didn't put in hydrants and water systems in place. And they didn't do that because they didn't need to. They had slaves to do that stuff. As a matter of fact, it got even worse than that because the slaveholders down there actually made extra money hiring their slaves out to draw water and bring water to people. And so they actively asked the state and lobbied the state not to put in these water systems because it would impact their income. This is a perfect example of how just maybe had we, humankind, recognized the evils of slavery earlier and gotten rid of it earlier, who knows how much farther along, technologically speaking, we might be today. Slavery retarded technology. And yet, in its own way, it's possible that slavery was an advance in human morality. How weird is that? I had to get used to that concept myself, and yet it's something I've always wondered about, being a military history buff. When I read in uh, Milton... Melter's book, this same thought, I thought to myself, okay, I'm not crazy, but here's the way that idea works. I mean, it's blasphemous, but it makes some sense. Way back in prehistoric times, when human beings would fight each other and one side would defeat the other, generally the way that the survivors of the defeated side were treated is they were simply massacred. You know, you line them up and you start lopping off heads. What Meltzer says is that at some point in human prehistory, somebody realized, and it may have been at the suggestion of one of the people in line to have their heads lopped off, that these people that were about to be massacred were worth more alive than dead. And what did these defeated individuals have to offer their captors? Their labor. Their lives may have been spared as part of a deal. You work for me and I won't kill you now. And what Meltzer says is as strange as this sounds, that might have been a step forward in human morality. How blasphemous does that sound? I think it's open to interpretation. Maybe people would be better off dead than a slave, but seems to me you'd have to ask the individual about to have their head lopped off how they felt about that. Get more hardcore history at dancarlin.com.